Hello, everybody, and welcome back. I know it's been a couple of weeks. If you've ever wanted to know what is the most degenerate way to learn how to code, this is the video for you. Step one, move back into your parents' place. <laughs> Cut all contact with friends. Don't have a relationship. Girlfriend, never heard of such a thing. Step two, China releases a virus that infects the world. <laughs> and everything shuts down. So even if you wanted to have a social life, that's not an option. Step three, put a weight cage, one of those weightlifting cages in your parents' basement, and that barbell is going to be your only friend in the world. Next, set an alarm for 3.30 in the morning and get a lot of Adderall. <laughs> You're going to put a glass of ice water next to your bed and a 30 milligram instant release. You're going to wake up at 3.30. Do not turn on the light. Do not open your eyes. That's a key to this plan. You're going to, with your eyes closed, shuffle to the bathroom and pee. Shuffle back to bed. Pound the glass of ice water. Take the 30 milligram Adderall. Go back to sleep. A second alarm will wake you up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Now, your thirst is quenched. Your bladder is empty, and you've got the Adderall in your system. You're going to go down into the basement, and you're going to do front squats, low weight, high reps, until your legs burst into flames. You're going to have usually a bowl of Weetabix in the morning. Those who uh, <clears throat> are previous colonies will know what I'm talking about, Weetabix. You're going to then take a shower and get on the computer around 7 a.m.-ish. And then you're going to sit at that computer until about 10 p.m., slamming your head into a brick wall of software development. And you're going to do that six days a week until you get a job. That's what I did for five and a half months. 3.30 to 4, and then 4 to about 7, and then 7 to about 10 p.m., just software, nothing else. However, I did use the seventh day to have a digital detox of sorts. And that's when I picked up carpentry and I realized that hitting things with a hammer was just the most incredible contrast with software. <laughs> because obviously anybody out there who does, who does uh, development, you know that you can't address issues directly. But something that software offers you is an incredible level of fidelity. You can get literally pixel perfect with your intention. And there's, I don't think there's any other art form I can think of that allows you that level of perfection. Now, when I say perfection, I mean relative to the idea in my head. When you're working with software, it can be pixel perfect, but all other forms of artwork or all other, other creative endeavors, what you re, what you produce, what the result is, will always be different than you than the idea you had in your mind. Maybe if you're a master, all that means is that the average person, the layman, can't see any of your mistakes. I'm not a master carpenter. Any jackass, <laughs> any any swing and dick can walk in here and look at a table that I built, and they can see how the table is not ideal. They can see edges not perfectly lining up. They can see surfaces not being perfectly flat. They can see where it's rough. If you're a master carpenter, maybe only you recognize your mistakes, but make no mistake, master carpenters, even though their work looks perfect, if you ask the carpenter, they'll tell you that there's a hundred problems. All they can see are problems, inaccuracies, ways in which their artwork differs from what it is in their mind. That is one of the beauties of software. Extreme precision. Assuming that you can get things to work, which is <laughs> the actual problem. Precision is not the problem. Getting things to work is the problem. But then when things break, oh, you suddenly have to put on your detective hat, Sherlock Holmes, and you have to devise all of these obsequious roundabout, circuitous methods to try to figure out what's wrong. 
And we've all been there where all that's wrong is like there's an erroneous space or there's a, uh, a tilde when there's supposed to be a, a comma or not a comma, a uh, parentheses. I don't know. You know what I mean. The, 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 this one versus this one. <laughs> or there's a, a left slash when it's supposed to be a right slash. Software is so unforgiving. <laughs> but the trade-off is you get that precision. With carpentry, when there's a problem, it's directly addressable. Look, there it is. Oh, this table wobbles. It's that leg, and you can address it directly. And sometimes it's even so forgiving that you can address it with a hammer. <laughs> but... I did about 15 hours a day, give or take. There were definitely quite a few 20-hour days. There were definitely a few days where I didn't get any sleep. There were definitely some easier days when I only called it after 10 or 12 hours. But after five and a half months of that, I just took the very first job that was offered to me. And this is a very interesting examination of my mindset and how it differed from a lot of my peers. Because make no mistake, almost none of my peers got a job. Sadly, they worked just as hard as me, give or take. A lot of them had CS backgrounds, so I think I was one of the few people who came in with absolutely nothing. I, I had never written a line of code. I did, I briefly, I took a technology class in high school where we worked with a little bit of HTML, but that's it. It was a static page that did nothing, and we just like displayed an image. But I had no interest in it in high school, so I didn't pursue it. So then... Going into that boot camp with absolutely nothing was brutal, and I do not recommend it. It was, uh, I think that's the closest I ever came to like borderline psychotic episode. Uh, the amount of stress that I put on myself, and it was a boot camp where that we had to sign an, I, an ISA, an income share agreement. So. The camp only gets paid if I get a software job, which means, and it has to be a job over 50 grand a year, which means they want to cut as many students as possible. So we had to take a test every Friday, and if you failed it, you had a chance to retake it on Saturday. If you didn't pass it by Monday, you're out. And then we had a big exam every once a month where you had to actually produce a piece of work and then that had to be assessed. And if that was unsuccessful, you also got kicked out of the program. So on a week-to-week -week basis, it, there wasn't this attitude where like you could fall behind. You literally could not fall behind. You couldn't afford to. If you fell behind by half a day, half a day of work, you couldn't possibly catch up and you would be kicked out of the program. So that was, I would say, probably the most degenerate way to learn software. But I knew that the world was coming to an end <laughs> in like November of 2019, end of November, beginning of December. So at that point, I canceled my plans because I was planning on going back overseas, either Poland or Thailand, whoever offered me the better deal and whichever seemed like a better lifestyle. I canceled my plans and I decided, look, if I'm ever going to learn software, now is the time. And I got told this when I was a kid and I never forgot it. And my dad told me this, I'm pretty sure, if my memory serves. He doesn't remember, which is ironic, of course, like your parents don't remember. The, the lessons that they teach you that you remember, they don't remember teaching you. <laughs> but at one point he told me, there's no reason to bet on the end of the world because if you're right, there'll be no one around to pay you. <laughs> so you, you'll never be able to cash in the proceeds of that bet. So... In December 2019, when I was like, okay, it looks like the world's ending, I'm going to assume that the world doesn't end. Because you sort of have nothing to lose. If the world doesn't end, you can spend the next six months radically improving your position in life. Well, you mean, I mean, a lot of people just sat around and smoked weed and played video games. Don't get me wrong, that sounds like it would be awesome. But that's not how I spent my time. If the world does end, you're going to be killing your neighbor for a slice of bread anyway, so it's irrelevant. <laughs> All of this other stuff is irrelevant, uh, you know, so unless you're going to spend those six months preparing, like, you know, getting really fit and practicing your with your weapons or whatever you're going to do, preparing for the apocalypse, getting, just preparing, practicing swinging the axe. 
So I was just assuming that, okay, the world's not going to end. I probably should upskill because at this point, food service and teaching were my only skills. And let's be real, these skills are not valuable. They are valuable skills, but they are not valued by the market. Teachers are really important. They get treated like shit and paid like shit. Food service is really important, treated like shit, paid like shit. So I realize those are not an option. I have to, I have to do something else. Now, I wouldn't advise that 3.30 a.m. Adderall, and then I would take another dose of Adderall around noon. I wouldn't, so I would take about 60 milligrams a day. On, on the extreme days, I take like 90 milligrams, which is getting to my, those are getting to like college level numbers. <laughs> 90 milligrams of Adderall is fucking aggressive. But I wouldn't advise that to people. However, Software is not something to consider part-time unless you don't need a job. If you're like, if you've got a great job and you like what you do and you make a lot of money and you want to learn software for your personal reasons, you want to make a website or an app, fantastic. That's the only circumstance where software as a hobby is acceptable. If you want to get a job, I think you're only benefited the, the only return on investment that should be considered is if you go 100%. You don't, you don't have to go as degenerate as I did, but I told myself once the world was ending, <laughs> or apparently so, I told myself if the world doesn't end, I'm moving back into my parents' apartment, back into my parents' house, and I don't have the skills necessary to succeed at an economic level that I'm happy with at a, at a level that would afford me a house and a family and these things that I may or may not want, but I at least want the option. I want to make enough money where I can, I can decide to have a family. If I want, I want to make enough money where I can move out of my parents' house if I want. And then I just set myself to it at, the cost of life. Uh, I told myself, if I don't do this, <laughs> I, I just realized that what I was about to say it will probably get me banned on YouTube. <laughs> Basically, I uh, metaphorically put a gun to my own head. I metaphorically made myself an offer I couldn't refuse. I said, you will do this because your life depends on it. And then that justified an absolute dedication, but absolute dedication to something like this is what's required. So if you're in that situation where you feel like you need a software job, maybe you should consider absolute dedication. Maybe. Now, again, this was 2019. It's now 2025. The market's very different. So you can watch my video. I'll have that come up on the screen maybe at the end of this. Watch my video about whether or not I would even pursue a job in 2025 in software, uh, assuming that I was starting day one fresh. But that's the most degenerate schedule. I challenge somebody to post in the comment section a more degenerate schedule. <laughs> I sped run through what would take other people a four or five year CS degree just to begin applying for jobs. Oh, and to, to touch on the point I didn't finish earlier about mindset, a lot of my peers, because it was only a six-month program, so we were, we were two weeks into the final month when my previous team lead posted a job ad. So he had left the program a few months prior. He was my team lead for the first few months. And he, I don't, he, he sort of like didn't tell us anything about the job. He just let us know that it's not a very good job. It's low pay, high work for a little company that will probably either go bankrupt or fire us. But I knew that without a CS background, I needed professional experience on my resume. So when he posted that ad saying, hey, the company that hired me a couple months ago, they're looking for another developer, nobody else answered the ad, which shocked me, shocked me. I leapt upon the exp on the uh, opportunity. I said, "Yes, please, <laughs> yes. We're 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 graduating in two weeks, 
and all my peers were really optimistic. They're like, we're graduating in two weeks. I can't wait to start applying for jobs. I was like, start applying. You need to take anything that you can get, anything you can get, just so that you can put on a resume, I've done this. Somebody paid me for it. I established a precedent that I am professional. I are baboon. And so that's what I did. I jumped upon it, and uh, they took me into an interview. I think the only technical part of it, they asked me some SQL questions, and I answered those well enough. They asked me a couple node questions about uh, relational databases, and I answered that well enough, and then they hired me. <laughs> and then having that experience got me my Deloitte job, and then et cetera, et cetera. So that, I think, is the most degenerate schedule let me know in the comments section if you had a more degenerate schedule or just let me know what yours was like. I know that a lot of people in CS programs work their asses off, but I think it's probably a different flavor of degeneracy because you're not necessarily under the gun. You at least know that you've got X amount of years ahead of you, especially if you're a freshman going into a CS program. You know, okay, I've got at least three or four years ahead of me. So... At, you're at least you're revving the engine with that anticipation of the length of the race, if that analogy works. Whereas in my world, there was no concept of where the race ends. It was just I need to get to the finish line as fast as possible. And if I need to work 15 or 20 hours a day to get there, so be it. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Secret Squaller, Toy and Bows and Champagne Chandeliers. Buy it on Amazon. <laughs> Subscribe and hit the bell icon and uh, like the video. And yeah, again, let me know in the comments section. I would love to hear other people. How many other people out there are abusing Adderall? Coffee is for the weak. <laughs> I like coffee. It's okay. But God damn it, Adderall is so much better. Okay. Anyway, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.